Hello and welcome to the No More Trauma podcast. If you are new, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. So happy to be here after the long summer break. And we are now in the month of August. Well, my name is Tanya, trauma survivor, certified trauma-informed yoga teacher, coach, and wellness facilitator. My mission is to provide healing, mental health tips, and inspiration for living a trauma-free lifestyle. You can find this podcast on Apple, SoundCloud, and on YouTube. I am so excited <laughs> for today's episode. Um, it just, my goodness, I, I, I just, as you already know, if you heard in the previous one, he's probably saying, Tanya, you're always excited. It's true. <laughs> I am. I'm always excited to uh, do the work that I do and to um, create this, uh, the content that I provide here. So I hope you had a lovely summer. What did you do? Feel free to let me know on any of the social platforms. Um, yeah, I hope you had a lovely summer um, just to share. Um, yeah, mine mine has been very nice. Um, just calling in lots of fun and peace and sun and um, I know everyone's like, don't talk about the sun. Do you feel this heat wave? <laughs> I know it's so hot. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you, me and my sunblock, we've been very close. Um, so, <laughs> uh, everywhere I go, there's, there's sunblock. It is so, um, you know, stay hydrated as best you can, um, pick up some aloe if that's something you need. Um, just try to, um, keep any of the juices on hand, the teas, uh, just all the things, but, um, and to hop in the water, hop in the ocean, hop in the river, hop in <laughs> wherever you typically go, hop in the pool, um, whatever you need. And if, you know, um, if you're taking a cold plunge and, you know, hopping in your tub, whatever that, is for you oh my goodness um you know or the hot springs oh so good so yeah I hope you're staying cool as best that you can um and so now we're in the month of August so I imagine you know uh kids are going back to school so um you know and I know that you know uh there can be a lot of concerns around that um, and just being prepared. So I hope that, um, you know, uh, you're preparing yourself and for the, you know, the kids in the ways, uh, that you need to, um, that gives you that, you know, emotional, um, and physical security, um, as you're sending them off, um, and just getting back into the groove of things. So, all right. Uh, long introduction. <laughs> Um, yeah, just wanted to, you know, warm up the seat here, warm up the mic <laughs> as we, uh, get back, um, into the flow of what I offer here, um, in, in the podcast. So today we're talking about, um, loneliness, um, experiencing loneliness while healing from trauma, right? Um, or just loneliness in general, wherever you are on your journey, excuse me, I'm adjusting myself on my seat, get a little noisy chair here. Uh, so a feeling that all beings will experience at some time in their life is loneliness. Maybe it took place during PE and you weren't picked in a game of dodgeball, or maybe it happened, you know, when your all your siblings met up, went out for lunch and you didn't get the invites. Or maybe you found yourself in a relationship and there's feelings of loneliness that has consumed you. According to Everyday Health, loneliness is a complex and universal emotion. It's an emotional disconnect and lack of intimacy. Okay. Um, and that's all forms of intimacy. Okay. And so 
we'll be looking at, um, I'll be going over the three types of loneliness, uh, heartbreak syndrome, loneliness versus solitude, uh, the trauma recovery uh, process or supports of that, um, the yoga poses that you can do to support that, foods that you can consume, how to combat loneliness. We'll go over some journal props um, and a quote and a little, you know, something small extra. <laughs> so the three types of loneliness, um, we have the extensual loneliness, Tanya, what is that? <laughs> well, uh, it's that existence, uh, that that mindset of that, wow, I exist in this world alone. When I, <laughs> I used to hear someone say, you're going to come into this world alone and you're going to go out this world alone. Oof. How does that sit, right? Take a breath. Did you listen to that? There's any angst? that show up, uh, I immediately, I, I have to be honest, as soon as I said that, I can just feel this um, sensation right in the belly. I didn't eat breakfast, so I'm, I'm trying to differentiate <laughs> that feeling, but yeah, right when I said that. So it's that feeling that, you know, that thoughts, right? I walk alone this single existence, I'm alone at birth, I'm isolated, and when I depart, I am alone, right? So it's that constant uh, maybe rumination on the idea that you are singular, right? Um, the emotional loneliness is when you feel single doubts, Okay, so when others around you are within, within an intimate connection and you may be lacking um, opportunity to connect um, and or explore intimate or emotional closeness, um, this can also be with a friend or relative, so not just uh, with a partner, okay? So maybe someone has a roommate and you live alone, um, so you're just kind of lacking that emotional connection. Um, you know, again, um, partnership marriage, right? Um, and, you know, you may be in, on the uh, journey of emotional loneliness um, for the, you know, say the past year, right? Um, and so the third loneliness um is social loneliness and i do apologize for the sound behind me we got a passing truck um <laughs> uh, okay so sorry <laughs> all right so all right so the social loneliness um lacking support or belonging to a social community or group, right? So um, immediately, you know, social group, social community. So you can think um, kind of like your extracurricular activities, right? So anything outside of, you know, work or school, um, just kind of lacking that, especially if you work in an office, right? Um, and it's just yourself within that office. And then you go out um, and you're not really getting that, um, you're not able to socialize, right? Um, so the, the primal need for human existence is that, you know, wanting to belong, right? So we're looking at that. So how does loneliness impact the body, right? So what part of the body does loneliness impact? And what happens is the cortisol levels are impacted, which can have detriment to the cognitive health, okay? So this is your vascular health. It's gonna cause inflammation and it increases the chances of heart disease. My gosh, you know, as I was, you know, preparing this podcast and I'm saying, wow, 
I didn't know the intensity of loneliness. And immediately I started to think about um, individuals who are isolated for a long period of time. Um, I don't know if anyone's familiar with the story of uh, Brittany Griner. Um, goodness, was that this year? Um, yeah, I believe it was. What was it? Uh, mm, um, don't quote me. I do apologize. I haven't, but I could have sworn it was, um, uh, I want to say, I want to say less than, mm, it was less than a year where she, um, professional, uh, sports player who was, um, detained and, uh, traveling. And so when she was detained, I, oh my goodness, I haven't done the research, but I mean, my goodness, I was following the story for quite some time, but being isolated, um, detained for, um, I believe a cartridge, um, in Russia. So traveling with that and, um, she was, you know, withheld, uh, for quite some time, but immediately, you know, my first thought as I was following the story, you know, after two weeks, you know, I was just like, wow, this extensive period of loneliness and how that it really can impact the body. Um, and it just really just threw me for a loop at the intensity of loneliness. Right. So anywho, I will put the story in the notes. So I apologize if it wasn't clear, um, or if I didn't articulate the, the, or narrate the story that well, but I will put the link, uh, so you can, you know, just kind of read on that story if that's something you find interesting. So, uh, other symptoms can include high blood pressure, uh, depression, chronic anxiety. Okay. So when we look at the elder community, isolation can also cause Alzheimer's disease or shorten life expectancy. Um, you know, I thought a, a very, um, again, as I was preparing this podcast, I, you know, started to think about, oh goodness, am I ready to speak on this? Um, very close. Oh goodness. I don't know if I'm ready, um, to speak on it, uh, just yet. So allow me that space, but I just think of someone really close to me um, and just the, mm, wow. I just think of the, just the, the discomforts on how that feeling of loneliness could have, you know, traveled to the body and just created a very um, intense, uh, emotional state and physical, you know, discomfort. Um, I guess I'll leave it there and not ready to share that yet, but, um, we start to look at heartbreak syndrome, right? So heartbreak syndrome is also known as the, uh, also known as cardiomyopathy, cardiomyopathy, if I'm saying that right. Um, so it's cardio M Y O P A T H Y. So cardiomyopathy. So sudden stress, uh, what that is, is it's sudden stress that weakens the heart muscles. Okay. So that's emotional stress. So it can, so when we look at weakening of the heart muscles, we break that down even further, um, the impact emotionally and physically, what is happening. So, um, the emotional portion can be uh, emotional stress. So that's fear, that's grief, uh, shock or surprise or extreme anger, anger. Okay. And then physically what's happening is the stress includes severe bleeding, difficulty breathing, such as asthma or high fever, stroke or seizure. Uh, and that was pulled from the John Hopkins uh, medicine article. And it talked about the heartbreak syndrome. I pulled that up because it, you know, 
um, when this topic came to me, uh, it actually came to me um, as I was in my yoga therapy, for those who don't know, but I'm currently in um, clinical yoga therapy uh, training um, to continue working with um, students and uh, who are, you know, experiencing discomfort or needing some guidance in their practice emotionally and physically. And so as we're in the training, the topic of loneliness came up and she, what she described was the hearts because when we experience this sensation of loneliness, commonly it comes from the heart space. And what she mentioned is that um, noticing the body, what happens when we experience, you know, heartbreak, right? Uh, there is a protection that the body tends, you know, it's a form that we tend to have and it's the rolling of the shoulders protecting the heart space and then, and even, you know, giving hugs, right? It's that need to pull someone closer, right? So when we, it's a heart to heart connection when we uh, give hugs, right? That belonging, that connection, right? Or maybe sometimes there's a deep sigh, maybe even a cry, right? When we embrace someone, a warm hug. Yeah. So loneliness versus solitude, okay? And so what is, what is that, right? Because it's almost, you know, if you ever told someone you were lonely and they say, well, why is that? You know, it's almost looked at as if, you know, almost shaming, you know, you shouldn't be lonely. You have all these friends or, or you have all your followers. Ooh. <laughs> and so what is the difference? And I found this quote to be, I really fell in love with this quote. And it says the expression from being alone, uh, loneliness is the expression from being alone, whereas solitude is the expression of glory from being alone, right? So, is it, so when we say we're lonely, there is a emphasis of I'm alone. I have no one around me. I'm going through this world alone, right? Or did you ever have, you know, or maybe this is for yourself or in contact with someone and it was like, oh my gosh, you went to dinner alone? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you went to the concert alone? You went to the movies alone? How can you? <laughs> right? But then there's this this solitude, right? This solitude where it's almost soothing. That solitude is a space to glorify and get back to all of those things that you enjoy, right? So loneliness creates fear, anxious thoughts, stress, or burden. So sit with that. Loneliness, right? It's the thought, the thought, right? Of other fears, anxiety, stress, or burden. Whereas solitude, solitude can be a desire for comfort, reflection, healing, getting back to other wellness activities, self-care, or healthy, like I mentioned before, soothing activities, right? 
So maybe immediately what comes to mind is is the mom <laughs> or the dad <laughs> um, or the legal guardian. In the in you're saying yes, it's August, Tanya. Oh yes, the kids are going back to school. <laughs> I have time now to be home and to clean up the space and to, you know, catch up on a show or two, squeeze in one of my favorite shows or squeeze in a good book or a podcast, no more trauma podcast. Hello. <laughs> and, you know, this is my time where I can just be in solitude before the kids come home. <laughs> You know, so it can be looked at as a gift, right? And so really quickly here, I want to just pause and just say that um, if you are needing to move through some loneliness, right, and cultivate the space of solitude, then you can join me on the mat at No More Trauma uh, YouTube channel, uh, the virtual uh, wellness studio where we practice yoga and Pilates for trauma recovery. Uh, I offer Pilates videos, uh, yoga, uh, and then of course you have this podcast. So feel free to join me there, right? And uh, you can also connect with me uh, on the uh, social platform. I am only on uh, Instagram. So Instagram and YouTube is where you can find me um, and connect, right? Um, so what are four yoga poses that can support loneliness? Oh, what are those? Uh, so we have camel pose. So camel pose, uh, that is a kneeling posture, right? So that you're on your um, kneeling high, right? Uh, and you're opening up the heart space, um, sending the hearts to the sky, allowing the crown to um, rest or hang heavy as the palms are resting back on the soles of the feet. Okay. Uh, so you have camel pose. So that you're going to look at all of your heart openers. Um, so offering compassion. I like to say when you open up the heart, you're extending compassion to others and giving it right back to yourself. Right. So sphinx pose is a good pose. Um, resting on the belly, forearms planted, shoulders width apart, heart out right? Taking that gaze or drifty to the nose. Um, you also have supported fish pose where you're reclining, lying down on the back. You can use a yoga block, just placing it in a thoracic spine, just allowing the um, heart space um, to be supported, right? And just reclining on the back. Um, and then you also have wheel pose, Okay, so wheel pose, just allowing you as you're standing to reach the, um, as you, um, as you're standing, maybe a gentle bend in the knees as you reach back, or you can start on the crown, I mean, excuse me, not on the crown, but on the spine, right? And as you come into your bridge pose, maybe you lift the tailbone, right? and gently begin to uh, lift the, um, what is that? Um, <laughs> um, you're lifting the spine and sending the palms um, next to the ears as you come all the way to rise. So a couple poses there that you can uh, practice, you know, if you're in a yoga practice or that's something you wish to explore. Uh, and then um, as we're beginning to bring this podcast to a close, I'm just gonna recommend a few other things. So uh, foods that you can consume. So this is uh, some citrus, citrus, they're energizing, right? To just kind of breathe life back into the body, the space, just kind of wake up the senses. 
Uh, then you also have like some leafy greens, you know, so, you know, things like chard, kale, spinach, spirulina, moringa, right? Or if you have like those morning uh, wheatgrass powders, just pop that into a juice. Um, so apple nuts, apples, nuts, fish, and some uh, lean meats if you um, are eating meat. Uh, and then um, other things uh, that you can also start to work with is joining a gym, right? How do I combat this loneliness, Tanya? Yes, I have agreed to all of the things that you've said. And, you know, I don't want to risk, you know, uh, heart disease. Um, I don't want to put myself at risk for stress or just, you know, chronic anxiety. I, you know, I have felt left out. Um, I am feeling left out in my partnerships or connections. I would first say have a conversation, um, but then, you know, start to um, create some activities around that. So again, it could be joining a gym, community fitness group, or online Zoom, or again, no more trauma, free YouTube channel, <laughs> um, travel groups, right? Um uh, so travel groups to connect with like-minded people. So meetup, that's also something that's great, right? Where you can meet um, like-minded people. Uh, this is something that I did uh, af after my divorce. Um, I joined a meditation center. So Shambhala uh, Meditation Center, they're all over the world. Um, and it's great. You can, you know, meditate. Um, uh, with your community, right? And, you know, of course, visitors that are passing through. Um, and then also um, adopting a furry friend, right? You know, a cat, if you're a cat lover, uh, if you're a dog lover, if you're into reptiles, maybe that. <laughs> Not quite furry, but <laughs> you can adopt a friend. Um, you know, and if you are um, considering dating, um, yeah, you can, you know, find, um, you know, apps, you know, if that's something that works for you, or you can, you know, start to go out into um, environments that, you know, singles may be present. Um, volunteer. Um, so volunteering your time, right, um, where you get to start to meet and connect with other people, right? Um, and then, you know, if you are a single father, single mother, of course, you can always join the mommy groups or the single dads groups um, and, you know, find that helpful. So journal prompts, I want you to consider, and I'll, I'll just read two of these and then of course I'll put this in the notes uh so uh begin to take inventory and discover where in your body do you feel lonely right just take inventory just sit right take a breath and just notice where is it where do I feel it is it in the throat right? Do I feel like I'm not able to fully express who I am? Right? Is it in the chest? Right? Do I feel any tightness there? Right? Any feelings of grief or longing? And just take an inhale and exhale. Right. And maybe you can begin to describe that feeling, right? And so just take an opportunity to journal again. There are more, I have seven, I believe seven uh, questions here that you can kind of ask yourself. Um, so I'll leave those, you know, the rest of those questions down in the show notes, okay? Uh, and lastly, lastly, as we begin to part, um, you know, it's an emotion that everyone 
will have. And again, it's a complex emotion, right? Uh, because different things can contribute to this unique emotion. Uh, but it's nothing to feel shameful for, right? Um, you know, I <laughs> have felt it so many times uh, in life. And uh, I think, you know, full transparency, I think I've finally come to a place where I have fully embraced solitude, partnered and, um, you know, non-partnered, <laughs> single, whatever, you know, that word is. Um, so with either, with both of those, because I think there is a, an importance of having that healthy solitude space to reflect and to hear your own thoughts and um, so again, to get to know your self, right? Um, very, very important. Uh, but confidently lost, it is definitely a song that I tend to um, play um, pretty often since it came out. It's the first thing that came up when I uh, was recording this, um, preparing to record this. Um, and um, again, I'll leave the link if you never heard of the song, never heard of the artist, uh, Sabrina Claudio. Uh, and I'll just read the first uh, verse here. And it says, I am alone, but I'm not lonely. Comfortable, comfortably indulging in trying to get to know me. I'm just an outline of what I used to be, constantly evolving, steadily revolving. I am confidently lost. Mm, so, so beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I just love it. Ah, such a good song. I'm going to play it after this, <laughs> after I close out here. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. And, um, you know, I always enjoy um, you know, any feedback and um, open to all connections and ah, so good. So, so, so good. So thank you again. I look forward to having you back. Remember to live abundantly, love your authenticity and radiate organic happiness. But most importantly, live a life of no more trauma. Namaste, be well.